Hi, this is Steve Grimmett, and you're listening to Sonic Perspective. And this is Michael, the Metal Angel, otherwise known as Metal Milieu, and I am speaking to Steve Grimmett, formerly of Grim Reaper, and now is Steve Grimmett's Grim Reaper. And I want to start by saying, now that we're finally chatting here, what a monster of a new album you have. Thank you very much, sir. That's right. I think the new, the new album is exceptional as far as music, uh, lyrics, attitude. It's just, it, I, I can't stop playing it. Awesome. That's, yeah. that's really good news. Yeah. Um, I know that they uh, wanted us to kind of do this interview last week and stuff, and I was just kind of very demanding. I'm like, I, I'm sure everybody he speaks to talks to him about the tragedy, and I want to touch on that briefly, but not really spend too much time on that. I said, I'd really sure. like to hear the new album. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, and now that... And now that I have it, I actually been uh, messaging your wife because um, yeah. I posted some stuff on Facebook, and she's yeah. like, "Wait till you hear the new album." I'm like, "I have the new album, and I highly recommend it. I can't wait for people to get it because people think it's yeah. going to be out soon." And I'm like, yeah, "It's still another month down the road, easily." But, but yeah. Um, yeah, what a comeback! I mean, you know, the Shadows was such a great album, and I mean, I loved it so much. I mean, it had the Grim Reaper esque uh, attitude, but it still was, you know, your own thing. And I mean, I've, I know you've yeah. done Grimstein. I know you've done Lion Star and all that stuff, but this is like a heavy metal album that sounds like it came out of the eighties. Um, yes. I just, I, I, I just, it's every song is catchy. Um, Ian Nash is just shredding uh, on the guitar. It's hard. It's, sometimes it's hard to believe you only have one guitarist um, because the, the guitar work is so exceptional. Um, yeah. And I guess you got the same lineup you had from Walking in the Shadows as well as just the Steve Grimmett band, correct? Um, let's see. I, I have now a different drummer and a different bass player. <clears throat> the other guys were uh, busy with something else and got to uh, not being able to spend time with us or time on us. So uh, we got in uh, a new drummer called Mark Pullin and okay. the bass player uh, Julian Hill. And they will be a permanent fixture for as from now on, you know. Oh, okay. So, uh, and they're... yeah, and he, he, he did do a good job. Yeah. And um, as much as I hate to say it, <laughs> he stood next to me. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he did. Fa- all of the guys did a fabulous job. It's it's a really cool album, you know. The guys also stepped up for me because uh, I'm going through. Um, <laughs> can't really put it in any other way but mental issues you know with losing my leg i suffered with post-traumatic stress disorder understandably and then uh, just a year ago i lost my brother oh. and i just hit a brick wall and i ran out of steam i couldn't write i it was just an awful time for me and the boys stepped up for me so uh, I, i've sort of written half of it and they've written the other half of it you know as far as lyrics and and melodies are concerned um, and it's helped me out tremendously to be quite honest but yes it is as far as I'm concerned a really killer album so that probably explains why you have a song like Line Em Up I'll Knock Em Down or The Hand That Rocks the Cradles The Hand That Rocks the World because you're dealing yep. with your personal issues of everything that you've got going on but also yep. bringing metal back to the, you know, you know, to the, because I, I know everybody goes see you live when I think it's great you're on tour in the U.S. currently, you know, they all want to hear See You in Hell and they all want to hear, you know, so many of these yeah. other songs, but, you know, yeah. they, they I need. I think I'd be, I'd be hung if I didn't play See You in Hell, so. Well, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think it's just, I think people need to realize you've done, what I'm saying is I think people need to realize you've done so much outside of Grim Reaper. Yes, um, I have, yes. You know, you know, like I said, you know, with the lion's share, whether the Grimstein, oh. or, you know, there's just, you've done so much outside of that. And now, you know, yeah. I guess Ian's been by your side for a while then, at least, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay. But, uh, yeah. well, you can tell all the guys, the bass player who answered the phone and the rest of them, that it's just, it's an excellent album. Um, they're his, they're, I'm inundated constantly with new music, and I just can't keep up, and I try to honor everybody and stuff. But um, I just had a rough night at work, and I came home, and I'm like, okay, well, I've got Steve Grimmett on the phone tomorrow. i got to play this new album. And I just I started playing it, and I stayed up to like 4 in the morning, and I was like... God damn, this is just this is just amazing. And I even texted your wife back. I'm like, I was like, I'm loving the album. I'm playing playing it at breakneck speed because it's just. It, I mean, I when I when I saw you on the Walking the Shadows tour with Onslaught, I interviewed you and I spoke with you and I told you how much I liked Walking in the Shadows. And I didn't think you could top that. So, but maybe tragedy and depression and life and, and all that stuff has helped contribute to that. It has, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, you know. And say the boys. Uh, the, the stuff that they wrote for me uh, is equally that equally sort of sharing that that um, outlook you know so it's good you know it is really good and it's all recorded old school it's uh, you know drums are mic'd up you know what you hear in drums is what we we got in the studio the guitars are mic'd up everything it's really, the whole thing is old school you know so it's really it's it's that, that's possibly the reason why it, it, it really is you know a sting in album so yeah absolutely and this is your second album for dissonant productions um i yes. saw i saw recently they reissued uh, onslaught search for sanity as a double disc with tons of spelling errors on the song titles um did you ever get like credit for that or acknowledgement for that no <laughs> of course not uh, of course not <laughs> Bastards. Yeah, never mind, eh? Yeah. I don't know whether they did that on purpose or not. I don't know. Well, it seems no like idea. it seems like they're just picking up a lot of slack where like candlelight left off and where uh, uh, metal minds left off and some. I mean, it just seems like they're just getting everything lately. I know I've talked to the guys at Raven and the same thing. It's like, you know, is that a cash grab? Do they actually author you know authorize it? But it's still yeah. good for people who want Search for Sanity on CD or vinyl. At least they can hear those yeah. songs. And it's always cool to hear the ACDC cover live anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. And I've always enjoyed I've always enjoyed your covers. I know uh, you always do a tribute to Dio live. Um, Yes. You know, and just even the older covers, the Van Halen cover, but actually uh, came across some of your bootlegs. Uh, I didn't even know bootlegs were available, but just to kind of stream them and listen to them. It was cool to hear you guys do the kinks back in the day with Grim Reaper and Sabbath and Thin Lizzy and yes. stuff like that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we've always done it. Uh, and we, we do it because we enjoy playing them, you know. That's it, really. So... But I've done I've done many albums as well as uh, as tribute stuff. Exactly. Uh, I've done Iron Maiden. Um, right, right. I remember that. Lizzie yeah. And all those sort of stuff. So yeah, because I, I just did it because I enjoyed doing it. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, and actually uh, noticed in some of your demos, I guess you never were on the Bleed 'Em Dry demo. You were in Chateau at the time, correct? Yes, well, I wasn't in Chateau. I was, I was in a band called Medusa. Okay, Medusa, um, right, of course, duh. Yeah, and uh, I did the Chateau because well, I did a single for them to start off with, and they, by the time they they were ready to go with the album, they still hadn't found a singer, so um, they asked me to do the album again, and uh, that's why I did it. And... Uh, yeah, Bleed Up Dry was was a, an older version of Grim Reaper, and uh, Nick called me up and said, "Look, you know, I've worked in the band, you know, blah blah blah," and uh, so that's what we did. And, and me doing that that the Chateau album, uh, in between that doing the single and doing the album, we won a, a, a 24 hour, uh, not 24 hour, but a, a battle of the bands. Right, and we right. went 24 hours in a 24 track studio so I took that demo that we did up to Everly Records where they did Chateau and six weeks later uh, Reaper was signed yeah and I noticed one of the uh, early on I guess it was it's actually called what Demo 1 and Demo 2 from the early days or uh, yeah. Demonstration 1 and Demonstration 2 you had a song called Loser in Love that never ended up on either other Grim Reaper albums that I can recall did that become another song no it did not actually no in fact you've just reminded me about the song no it did not no I don't know why uh, but it didn't yeah wow you sound a little bit under the weather How, how's it holding up with the tour in the US right now 
it's going good. It's going good. Um, we are. You're in Akron back tonight. In Akron now. We've right. just finished up in three dates in Canada. Right. And uh, we're back here now to do the one this evening. So uh, yeah, it's going really well though. It, it is. Uh, you know, we've had uh, three great shows in uh, in Canada, and it's it, it's happening. It's good. Yeah, I would imagine Canadian. I know my buddy. Uh, Jimmy from the the Metal Voice, a big uh, fan yes. friend of yours, and I knew the Canadian shows would go real well. Um, I was yeah. hoping the, the the North American American ones. When I actually just saw that you were in Akron, I, I'm in Cincinnati, so we're in the same state right now. And I was like, wait yes. a minute, he's oh, right. he's, a, he's in Akron. We we should drive up. But we just saw Kiss last night, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man, we need a little bit, a little bit of breather. So, and then, um, I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't want to touch on the tragedy too much. I don't want to, you know, I know that's sure. just been such a, a difficult thing. And, you know, kudos for you for, you know, bouncing back and handling it the way you are. Um, how is it performing in a wheelchair on stage, though? I mean, is it? <laughs> well, I don't use a wheelchair anymore. Oh, no wheelchair anymore. Uh, okay. I did, I did, uh, for a time because I've got a prosthetic leg, basically. Okay. And uh, using that takes up at least eighty percent more energy I to bet. to walk and and just you know do normal stuff. So uh, I did use the wheelchair f- uh, fairly early on because. Um, you know, I could only do maybe three or four songs, and then I needed to sit down. So, um, and at that time, I hadn't got um, uh, any electric mobility aids. So, uh, it was in a wheelchair for a time. But um, but now I can probably do most of the set uh, without uh, sitting down. I, I probably use a stool now right. rather than anything else. But uh, yeah, it's coming on. You know, the strength is building. I'm still learning to walk. Um, it takes a long time to be quite honest with you. But uh, yeah, I'm getting there. I bet. Yeah, I know. It's just. I mean, like I said, having seen you on that Onslaught tour and hanging out with you and talking to you and talking about the good old days of, you know, Onslaught and the good old days of Grim Reaper. And then, you know, a year later, that tragedy, it just it shook us all to the bone. And we thought, you know, this and and I know Jimmy was just like, you know, you know, he keeps going. He's still doing shows. He's still performing live, you know, and the last thing I expected was a new album. Um, And so when when they were talking about, you know, you being available for interviews with a new album coming out called At The Gates, I'm like really oh my god <laughs> and then i didn't expect it to be just this in your well, face that, total yeah. kick-ass british heavy metal album too well that's that's the reason that well that was part of the reason you know and i i had nothing to do while i was in the hospital right in ecuador and it was like right okay i'm gonna get back up on stage i'm not ready to quit so it was uh, i i only had half an hour's internet a day and so I spent half of that talking to my family in rotation. Absolutely. And um, and the other half was like, right, how do I get back on, uh, back up on stage? How can I do this? So basically, that's what I did, you know, for seven weeks because I had no entertainment whatsoever. That was it, you know. And uh, it was uh, right. This is how I go about it. You know, when I got home. Uh, spent another two weeks at, in hospital there and um, was uh, all the decisions were made it was just a question of where I get it done you know where I go to, to get a new leg so or prosthetic leg so uh, and then six months later I was back up on stage at Bang Your Head uh, Festival in Germany but, uh, yeah that's yeah, just I just that's I such admiration and respect for you for doing that. Um, I know, like we, like you said, just any kind of physical tragedy, a debilitating tragedy, you know, is so difficult. I mean, you know, the new Possess came out this year, and I talked to Jeff Becerra, and I just admire how he's been, you know, after having been, in, you know, in a shotgun accident so many years ago, and after 30 years, just keeping Possess going, you know, and he's performing yeah. with in a wheelchair with a microphone, and just anybody with any disability or anything like that. And like you say, uh, to add insult to injury, you know, you had death in the family and personal tragedy. Of course, depression is going to kick in. And, yeah. um, yeah, it does. you know, and I, and you know, but you, like you, you, as you well saw with the little social media you had or little internet you had after you dealt with your family, how we all responded. And, you know, instantly they were setting up charities and everything like that because your fan base is so honest and so loyal. And we're just so glad that you're still doing it. It's just, you know, yeah. do you, do you, any, yeah. do you get any more royalties for your Eurotrain voiceover thing anymore? 
No. Uh, of course no, not. Uh, I mean, for, for the Reaper stuff from the 80s, I haven't had a penny. Uh, but we are looking at that. Well, not looking at it. We're doing something about it right now. Uh, it's been six years been trying to get the money. Um, and we're still trying. So, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a pain in the backside, but hey, we're still doing it. Definitely, definitely. Well, I know you got a show to do, and I know you're, you know, feeling under the weather. So I'll keep this real simple. Uh, cool. I, I got to say a few things real quick, if you don't mind. Um, sure. First, first of all, uh, if we were to play a single from from your new album, what would you like? Because you don't have a single out per se yet. What would you like us to play? Uh, Venom. Venom. Okay, second track. All right. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening to my conversation here with uh, Steve Grimmett of Steve Grimmett's Grim Reaper. Uh, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and our website at www.sonicperspectives.com as well as our YouTube channel. Uh, Steve has chosen Venom as the song for us to play, so we will definitely play that. Uh, any final words or final screams you would like to leave us with? <laughs> yeah, uh, I like what you did there. <coughs> um, yeah. Just thank you to the fans, you know, for for supporting me um, and uh, telling me how you feel and all that sort of stuff, um, and your continued support. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Absolutely. And the new album coming out uh, in October is called At the Gates. Let me tell you, it is a monster of an album. It is metal to the core. There isn't a bad. There, it, it is all killer, no filler. Songs like Hands That Rock the Cradle, uh, Line Them Up, Breakneck Spreed, Under the Hammer, and like he said, Venom and At the Gates just kick ass. And I'm so glad that he's touring and keeping it going. And it's like I said, my name's Michael, so I'll always go back to What's the Matter, Michael? You're a goddamn child <laughs> in your own mind. Physically, yes, started. Daddy. But I am 26 <laughs> years old. So, always going to choose Final Screams. But hey, man, thanks. Yeah. I'm so glad we were able to make this happen. I really appreciate it. All the best. Enjoy your show in Akron. I'm sure you have great supporters there. And okay. uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, buddy. You take care. All right. Cheers. See you. Bye. Bye. Some people think